I'm James Bedford. We're in Dubai for the Internet of Things World Forum. I'm joined by Georg Kopetz from TT Tech. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you, James, for having me here. Tell me more about your company. What does TT Tech actually do? Yeah, TT Tech's vision is to provide electronic robustness for a world which is getting more connected and more electric. And when we talk about more connected, we talk about the Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. And TT Tech really is focusing on the robustness of the networks inside the machines. So okay. inside the cars, the planes, the trains, the industrial factory floor. So I've heard a lot about the phrase deterministic Ethernet. What is that? Yeah, today, Ethernet is the foundation of the Internet, uh -huh. TCP, IP. And uh, when we developed the Ethernet standards, we looked very much in how to transfer data. Um, um, and now we also want to build control systems on mm -hmm. top of Internet. We talk, we talk about the industrial Internet. But in order to enable the industrial Internet, we have to make Ethernet highly deterministic. Okay. So this means it must uh, be able to communicate in real time and you need to provide a guarantee of service so that you have a bounded latency and that you know exactly what will happen when in the system. So the time becomes very important. And our company, TT Tech, as the company name says, Time Trigger Technology, uh -huh. is an expert in time. So we provide hard real time into the Ethernet standard and we call it the deterministic Ethernet. And of course, with the Internet of Things, those sensors monitoring activities and being able to report in real time. Why is real time so important yeah, to uh, industries? Yeah. So um, many critical systems uh, are critical because they have to perform something at a certain point in time. Uh -huh. yeah? And today when we talk about the IoT, we talk a lot about monitoring systems. But that's only the first step. The systems will evolve and we also want to control things. Mm -hmm. First we want to control things by human interventions, but then we also want to automate and control those things completely autonomously uh -huh. so that machine talk to machines without human intervention. And if you want to do this and if you want to do critical processes, you need to be very precise in timing and hard real time mm -hmm. and you need to have a common infrastructure to enable this. There's a second property with the Ministry Ethernet which makes it very interesting for many applications. This is that you can, that you can converge different traffic flows yeah. on one physical infrastructure. So you can basically uh, not only have the control traffic, but you can also have your maintenance traffic, you can have your voice over IP, your video, you can have everything and you have a partition network so the bandwidth is protected. And the critical data, and the critical traffic and the non-critical traffic can coexist um, with each other. Let's talk business outcomes. So this deterministic Ethernet, how is it helping your customers? Yeah, so it's all about uptime. Uh, it's all about uh, having higher productivity. Uh, it's all about changing the business models, using the data inside the machines and taking, making sense out of the data and then providing new business models where mm -hmm. you can better understand when will the machine have to be maintained, when can I upgrade the machine and provide better performance, better operational performance with the machine because I can run it in, in an even more precise way. And, and so the Mystic Ethernet really enables you to connect the sensor to the cloud and really have the seamless connectivity that we talk about in the Internet of Things space and which is important to build these new business models focusing on output, output, yep. output, performance, reliability. <laughs> uh, this is what we all are here about. And also, of course, about safety because many of those systems also are uh, working in critical environments. We are very active in the automotive industry. It's a very interesting market. Uh, we are now going to self-driving cars. Of and, course. Uh, and they are all connected in a way inside the machines, but also be between the cars. And therefore, you need these highly robust networks to enable that. Let's focus on that. Some of your uh, customers include Embraer, Airbus, Boeing, Volvo, Audi. Tell me how they're using your solutions in those planes or the, or the automobiles. Yeah. So uh, normally, when you look into the machines, this is not only one computer running the machines. We have distributed computer networks. Mm -hmm. So there are many different computer nodes talking to each other and they're all controlling physical things in the environment. We call it cyber physical systems. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, those connections today have been based on proprietary networks 
because Ethernet really was more for the internet and the machines had their own language and their own products. Yeah. Yeah? And now with the emergence of industrial internet and IoT, um, everybody wants to have common standards, they want to build common platforms. And Ethernet is the prime candidate for building this platform. And so our customers use the technology to really connect the computers inside the machines, but yeah. also to connect the machine to the outside world. Uh, so it's a really an, a way to distribute intelligence across the machine, and we sometimes call it the nerve system. Uh, okay. So the brain is the computer, and we are the nerve systems, and then basically we attach it to the sensors, which is like our different sensing, and the actuation, of course, that we act in the environment. Yeah. You mentioned just a moment ago cyber physical systems. What's yeah. the big vision there for that? Yeah, the big vision is that, you know, about 20 years ago, we started to implement computers into our machines. Most of the people didn't recognize that we had computers in our cars, in all our equipment around us. And now we are awakening, uh, to, to use the scheme <laughs> of the IoT World Forum here in Dubai, we awaken those machines and we connect them to the internet. And by doing that, we can get access to the data. Yeah. And we can also start to have more machine-to-machine -machine, uh, communication and have more uh, autonomous machines uh, talking to each other, working with each other. And then we have another very interesting topic, which we call human robot or human machine collaboration mm -hmm. because we are not going to race against the machine we're going to work and live with the machine with the machine of uh, course and, and i think that's very important uh, that this event and uh, this emergence of the industrial internet really provides new levels of productivity but also efficiency and also will provide more exciting work environments because the machines will be smarter and will be more fun to work with them and uh, so we believe that the cyber physical systems was the first step but now with the IoT, cyber physical systems really basically awake and to become part of our internet infrastructure. So we are awakening machines with IoT. Yes. We're working with them and not racing against them. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's a great note to finish on. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us Thank you in the much. studio. Yeah. We'll see Thank you, you soon. You. Thank you.